Hi, I'm Andrew Hedin, partner with Bessemer Venture Partners, and today I'm in the biotech capital of the world, Boston, Massachusetts, talking to a leader building the future of biotechnology, Generate Biomedicines. If the 20th century was the age of physics, then the 21st century will be the era of biology. Over the past few years, scientific discoveries like CRISPR for gene editing have revolutionized the way we think about life. What if there was a future where we reverse aging or bring extinct animals back to life? And what's even more pressing, imagine a future where we cure diseases like cancer. There are a number of leading businesses leveraging biotech for humanity's progress. We're extending a special congratulations to Incitro, Path AI, and Generate Biomedicines, just a few examples of the many businesses leading this space. One exciting area of innovation is the application of new machine learning techniques to complex biological interactions. For example, we have 20 amino acids that combine to form dozens of thousands of proteins in our bodies. And the way these proteins fold and interact with other cellular structures is crucial to ensuring our bodies can perform basic functions like protecting us from viruses. But even one small substitution in a cell's DNA sequence can cause unpredictable changes in protein folding, which in turn can have catastrophic effects on the way our cells work and cause life-threatening diseases. Companies today are using artificial intelligence and machine learning not only to predict protein folding, but also to detect cancer early and even generate new drug therapies. Today, I'm getting to know Generate Biomedicines, one of the companies that's building this part of our biotech future. I'm sitting down with CEO Mike Nally. He's gonna tell me what sparked the creation of Generate Biomedicines and how he believes that his company will change the world. Mike, so can you tell me a little bit about the story that inspired you and the team to start Generate? So Generate was founded four years ago with a simple question in mind. What if we knew how DNA dictates protein function. And while scientists have been trying to crack this question for the better part of three, four decades, unfortunately their results um, were brittle, lacked robustness. And so the team said, you know, maybe there's a different way of approaching this entirely. You know, could we use machine learning to directly infer um, the principles that govern protein function from nature? In the case of proteins, there are amazing data sets. You know, the protein data bank, you know, the sequencing revolution has defined every amino acid sequence across all species. And by understanding those uh, data sets, um, we're now able to program novel medicines with desired attributes. You know, what generates technology allows us to do is unearth a scalability that's never been seen before. You know, if you think about how drugs have historically been discovered, it's been through individual genius or small teams of geniuses that have a fundamental insight. At Generate, we put the computer at the center of that innovation loop. And so it allows us to get better with every task that we take on. And so if you think about it, just like the great artists weren't scalable, the da Vinci's of the world, the great drug discoverers also haven't been scalable. When you have computation at the center, it offers a scalability advantage that's truly unique. If there's one thing you wanted the world to know about AI and biotechnology, what would that be? I think undoubtedly, the traditional methods of drug discovery um, oftentimes are empirically based, right? We do a series of experiments, this trial and error, um, but there's a randomness to it. We're entering an era where the complexity of biology is finally being understood at a more profound level given you know, the complementarity of human ingenuity and machine learning. Ultimately, what we believe you know, very strongly within Generate is that biology is becoming engineerable. We think the future of medicine is gonna be medicines that are programmed rather than experimentally discovered. This should enable us to alleviate a lot of illness at a scale, but also at a quality that we've never been able to find before. Ten years ago, this industry was often skeptical of hearing AI and machine learning and how AI and machine learning would actually apply to biotechnology development. What's changed over the last couple of years that enabled yeah. Generate to exist? So number one, you know, we didn't have the underlying computational power to actually train the models that we're working with today. If you think about our core model at Generate, a decade ago, it would have taken over 100 years to train our core model using the cutting edge supercomputers. So we didn't have actually the computational capability. From a data perspective, we were also limited. Part of what's been, I think, a rate limiter in all of healthcare is data quality. Um, we were fortunate in the protein space, there are just two really amazing high quality data sets that allowed us to make these sort of advances. And then lastly, but I think really critically, machine learning techniques have also advanced. It's the convergence of these three factors along with a new generation of talent where we are starting to see people that are trained at this intersection 
of both machine learning and protein design that I think really elucidates the opportunity. Can you talk about a time when the team had a scientific breakthrough <laughs> or a, an yeah. a eureka moment? I, I think there have been a few, right? I mean, I think the, the first experiments that were done in 2018 um, were really saying, you know, can you actually modulate protein function using a machine learning based approach? We tried to optimize a fluorescent protein and say, can we make it brighter? And this had never been proven out, never been done before. This is well before generative AI was part of the common lexicon. And in the first experiment, we saw a 50-fold improvement above the most fluorescent protein that we knew on the planet. That's amazing. And so it was one of those days where you're kind of like, you know, if this continues to hold true, it's going to profoundly change how we design medicines in the future. You've talked about how this technology can change drug development, but imagine a world where it generates massively successful and you, know, you achieve every dream that you think this, this company has the potential to achieve. When we're thinking 5, 10, 15 years out, what will that mean? Yeah, I think the two core metrics for me, Andrew, are how many people do we help and how much help do we provide those people? When you think about this technology, um, it has applicability to solve some of the greatest unmet medical needs the planet's ever faced. We're focused in areas like cancer, immunology, and infectious disease. And our goal is ultimately to cure disease, to prevent disease, and to alleviate suffering within the population. And I think we can do it at a pace and a scale that's truly unique.